Welcome to Heart of Poland. Today we're going to meet Marek Wojcik, the CEO of Virtual Teacher, a platform which is designed to change the way that the world learns. So Marek, welcome to Heart of Poland. Hello. We're going to talk about your company, your passion, one of your passions, which is virtual teacher. Um, and, uh, but I want to maybe talk about some background about how you got into teaching and what motivated you to create virtual teacher. Because one of the things which comes across very clearly is mm -hmm. that your central belief that the existing way that people are taught in Poland, mm -hmm. in schools or private lessons, is ineffective. Why do you think that? So I started teaching because I needed money in high school. <laughs> so it is very, very co connected to reality. It's not very passionate <laughs> in the beginning, but then I, I saw that I'm good in, in teaching and I, I focused on teaching. I had a, a small period on different businesses, but then I quickly went back to, to, to learning and private tutoring. Um, but in how I came up with the idea, I'm teaching mathematics <laughs> for eight uh, years online. Uh, and I saw you somewhere you said that you've been teaching 8,000 hours of teaching. Now about 9,000. That's a lot of time. Yes, I, I, I heard that uh, they, there was a research of uh, violin players, uh, of uh, some famous uh, psychologist I don't remember, and he told that 10,000 hours is enough to be a very good at something, that's yeah. why I'm comparing You're so it. close, my friend, yes. <laughs> just 1,000 more hours. Uh, but as you say, you were teaching and you started to observe some patterns. Yes, so uh, I, I noticed that a lot of students, like all of students, made the same mistakes or just rewrite something incorrectly. And I found out that the same uh, hints, question hints, works for everybody. So rather than telling people what the right answer is, you're actually ask, you're kind of guiding them via the right questions. Yes, and uh, because of my studies, I was uh, I was learning um, signal processing, especially signals uh, connected with with objects, with pictures. So I saw that when uh, when a student during my online lesson writes on a virtual board, the signal, so the the, the equation, for example, that he he writes is already in a computer and it can be somehow processed to, uh, to give him hints and uh, check the calculations. So you began getting a little bit bored, Marek, would that be the right way to put it, with the same mistakes mm -hmm. appearing again and again and the same questions having to be asked? The only one interesting thing in, doing, in saying the same things over and over again is finding out what is the reason of somebody doing this mistake? Because you need to ask a lot of questions and give uh, another examples that are connected with the problem that somebody is solving to find out when the reason is. And mm. that's only one thing that is very interesting and it cannot be, it, it won't finish in learning. So you, you've set up Virtual Teacher. It's a relatively new business. I think, uh, how long have you been working on it? The idea has four years and I was checking the market over and over again and because an, anybody did it, I went back to, to IDEA more than a year ago and I'm uh, doing it. Yeah, so a year is relatively short but it's probably been a very active time. Can you just talk us yes. through what is Virtual Teacher at the moment, where can we find it online um, and what's it going to look like in the future? Okay, so now we have a ready prototype. Uh, our website is uh, virtualteacher.online and you can check, uh, check how it works. Now it only checks the calculations, so it gives you only inf the information if the calculation is correct or not. But in the future, it will not only say if you're co uh, calculating correctly or, or not, but you will have uh, this uh, question hints according to Socrates' method and uh, the system will understand why you're doing this, this mistake and will show you why it is not correct and why you did this mistake. And where, where is the mistake in your, reason, uh, in your thinking? Now, I've, I've read from what you presented online in pitches and various things uh, that the average Polish family spends 400 zwoty a month on private tutoring. Is that, is that right? That seems like a huge amount of money. I don't remember this, <laughs> there this, was some stats this value, but this value makes sense for yeah. sure. The, the data that is for sure true is 
it is it was uh, found out in two different uh, uh, two different res uh, research 30% of polish students have private tutoring so this is huge amount of people is this always in maths and in science related subjects or this is in unfortunately all? we don't know because the question is do you use private tutoring yeah. to, to parents only so so private tutoring is clearly important to a very large number of students not just in Poland but around the world and by using mm -hmm. virtual teacher what you're saying is that you're able to dramatically cut the amount of time that a student's learning because the the methodology is so much better than the existing teaching methods of a private tutor okay so yes so be, because I'm learning uh, I'm using Socrates method. So I'm basically asking questions in a way that students are th uh, is thinking how to solve the problem instead of just showing the students how to solve the problem. So this is actually th this means therefore that I'm spending a lot less time getting to an answer to the question because I'm, I'm not repeating the same mistake over and over again with the same mm -hmm. kind of mental methodology in, in my head. In terms of one question, you will have to think a lot, a lot longer. Be but in the end, in terms of learning, when you do once on your own this question, you won't repeat those uh, problems again. And for example, um, I'm not giving my students um, the formulas, just ready formulas, but I ask them to uh, find out these formulas out of the formulas that they know. And that's why they learn it at once, because when you do something on your own, you understood the whole process of getting into this thing. And when you understand this process and you're working on your own instead of seeing how somebody else do it or following easy questions, very low, low level uh, instructions, uh, it is completely different uh, quality of learning. Well, as someone who had private maths classes, because I was so bad at maths, this is really striking home. Uh, Marek, you've been, this idea has been bubbling in your mind for, for several years. You've been working on it as a business for a year. Um, I want to know what's the biggest challenge that you've overcome in the space of this last year with a virtual teacher? Was it, was it a business process that you had to overcome? Was it financing? Was it selling the business to investors? What, what, what's the mm -hmm. biggest challenge that you've had to overcome with, in the last year? It is not like I, I've solved all the problems I have. I can say what problems we have now <laughs> and what we are struggling with. So the first thing is building a team because in our company we, we need to have several teams. So we are looking for good programmers, good teachers to make content to this, to this product. And we need to have a business part of the team also. So building a team is very difficult because, for example, how I am um, looking for teachers. I'm making open, uh, open uh, learning sessions for teachers, uh, like... Uh, ah, like it's, uh, I've seen on your Facebook site that yes. you're doing kind of online classes uh, in the Socrates method that you yes. briefly touched on and this is helping attract yes. people. Uh -huh. Because I need to show how, to, how it works, basically. I, I thought you were being too nice and spending your spare time yes, doing this. It, 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 <laughs> one side, I'm just giving something that is valuable and I, I'm very into, like, I have a foundation, passion for science, which is Fundacja Pasjanuki in Polish. And I'm, I'm doing a lot of things that are j just good for, for students and for improving learning methods. And on one side, it is just I, like 95% of those teachers won't work for me, for sure. So they will have value for, like for nothing, but I'm also looking for my employees in this way. Marek, how have you changed as a person in this big adventure, overcoming these challenges of building a team? What, what, mm -hmm. what, what, have, what have you learned about yourself? Um, I'm always fascinated in the things that we discover about ourselves going through this experience. Because you're out of your comfort zone, I guess. You've been teaching this long time, now you've gone into business, or you've always wanted yes. to be an entrepreneurial person? Uh, yes, I always wanted to be an, an entrepreneur, but in the end, I, I finished as, as a self-employed uh, teacher and uh, it is my safe zone because everything is connected with my work. I don't have to check other people's work like uh, entrepreneurship is about. And now uh, how I've changed, I learned how to work with other people and I understood that uh, the thing that we can do together is uncomparable to what I can do and even what uh, s uh, people can do separately. Yeah. Because this is uh, the effect when a lot of people works together, it is a lot uh, better than 
separately. Now, uh, the question is, where are you trying to build the business? Are you already operating in Canada, the US, I saw, the UK? You guys are already mm -hmm. starting to do some kind of minimum viable product testing in, in those markets? Mm, our, what is on our website is a prototype proof of concept. It's not MVP yet, and MVP will be ready in ninth months. And uh, we will start in Canada, then US, uh, United Kingdom, Australia, and then Poland. Okay, why those countries, or is that a really stupid question because they're English language speaking yes, that's and they're right. rich? <laughs> that's right, and it cannot be for US because we want to make dark testing. So we find a very similar market and we are showing our product and not only showing but selling our product and we're listening to, to what, our uh, what our customers say about this product. And before US, we want to improve this product. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna basically you're not gonna crack into the richest market until you've yes, tested it. Yes, because when it will be as a disaster, when it uh, were a disaster, it <laughs> would be completely disaster. So, so as a British person, <laughs> yes. uh, still very interesting subject. Um, okay, so what are the things that you're working on right now in your email inbox? What's the biggest challenge that you're cracking today? Today, oh, other than interview on Heart of Poland show. Uh, so, so let programmers work fluently. So I'm a person that uh, I have a CTO, uh, Arthur, Arthur Skiba, which is very experienced uh, yes. IT manager, and I'm working with with him and with programmers. I'm a, like a, mm, I I've got the, the idea, and I describe very uh, precisely the whole idea, and I'm a link between. Uh, teacher team and programmer team because they need to communicate and don't know and they don't know how to, how to communicate with each other because they use completely different language and I'm a guy who let them communicate and understand what the other side want. Uh, anyone with experience of working with programmers will know exactly what Marek's talking about now. Well, we didn't have enough time to talk about Socrates' method, uh, not so much about education, but not even that much about neuroscience. But I do want to mention, you were recently um, awarded um, distinction in the Academy of Pioneers by the Polish Development Fund. Yes. Can you just tell us what, what that meant for you and how, how it's helped you? So first of all, it was a huge surprise for me because I wasn't is expecting it. So when my, my, my ceremony was pronounced, I, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was there just to, uh, to, to say, uh, say what I'm doing and to uh, present what uh, changes is, are in my project. But what about uh, the, the School of Pioneers uh, at all? It was the, like the most intensive month of my life because we were working for eight to 12 hours, like every single day through this uh, whole month. And it was uh, a program that let me understand the whole business process because we focused on making business models, uh, making, all, uh, making all finances work well and uh, making presentations for investors as well. Because when you're doing a startup, uh, you want to work it very fast and mm. to make it ready first, you need money. Which is something you're doing as well. You've got crowdfunding, I think, as well as you're going for VC, or is it mostly VC and not crowdfunding? I hope that crowdfunding, especially equity crowdfunding, uh, will work for us. And we are now we are checking uh, the market if uh, it will be enough people to uh, willing to invest invest in our startup to to finance it using equity crowdfunding. But when uh, it uh, won't be possible, we will uh, take investment from VC. Okay, well, if you've been inspired by Marek's story of helping thousands, uh, can I even say millions maybe, potential children in the future? Of course, it is a worldwide program. So if you've been inspired by that story and you're even interested perhaps in finding out more, you can contact Marek, find out more about investing in the company uh, as an option and helping him to take this incredible Polish story to the world and indeed future to the US. Well, Marek, unfortunately we've run out of time. Uh, what a fascinating uh, individual you are and what passion you have for teaching people. I think it's fantastic. You can literally change the world with your ideas and that's what Heart of Poland is all about. So thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. Remember, you can see other fascinating conversations with fascinating people leading fascinating lives, changing the way that Poland looks today and tomorrow on the First News Channel when you look for the Heart of Poland program on any social media channel that you might look for. So I'll see you again for another episode of Heart of Poland.